All right, guys, I want to do another video on inflation and taxes. Uh, I did a video yesterday. Uh, it's going to be very similar to that deck, but I've made some, some changes. Uh, an, on a, another note, that deck I still have not lost with. I'm probably close to uh, the 20 win mark. So I think, uh, yeah, probably around 20, and I'm, I'm still undefeated. So 20 and 0, I would say. So uh, it's got me intrigued now to see if I can tweak and make um, more inflation decks of sorts. So let's uh, let's check out this new brew. I've I've got a new uh, card I want to feature within this build. I'm calling it the Tree Tax, uh, and it is featuring. Uh, I'm show basically showcasing this card today, the uh, Crooked Forest, which is not in that other deck that I had. Uh, so this card says. Uh, once returned, if your deck has four or more tremendous tree cards, your opponent's legendary cards, wherever they are, cost plus two energy for five turns. So I like this uh, this card specifically because of the five turns. Most people are going to rock a bunch of legendaries in their deck, and it they don't have to be in their hand. It's going to target them wherever they are. Uh, and five turns is quite some time to have uh, taxes Put on you. Uh, so similar to the other deck, now we have uh, Ragnarok doing the same thing, the plus two energy for the turn. Uh, King Midas also targeting just legendary cards, but they're only in the hand, uh, and it's plus three energy for three turns, so very good card there. Uh, going with our taxes theme. Uh, so the trees I've included to uh, work with the Crooked Forest, now it doesn't count as a tree itself, Obviously, it is in the history um, archetype, so it is not a tremendous tree. So I've got General Sherman uh, for some strength, uh, getting some of that big power down. Uh, Pando, who uh, is kind of going to take the place of my rabbit's foot, basically buffing everything else. Uh, it's going to lose 85 permanently, but that's okay. It's just acting as a, a buffer. Um, we have the Manticore, or I'm sorry, that's not, well, uh, but yeah, we have the Manticore also, uh, doing plus two energy for three turns, but I was talking about trees and I got distracted there. So, uh, Angel Oak is another inclusion and it is, uh, when played your tremendous tree cards in hand gain plus 28 this turn. And the final tree I've included is the Dragon's Blood Tree and, uh, your opponent's remaining cards in hand burn 24 for two turns. Uh, I was trying to get the the card, the tree, specifically. Um, I was thinking about doing, like, a, maybe some instruments in it as well in this deck, but uh, I was not able to, to get a hold of it in time to shoot this video. So I'm going to do it without it, and we just kind of went a different path. So maybe I'll showcase another Tremendous Trees deck in the future. I was kind of thinking maybe on a Paul Bunyan theme. Uh, I'd like to kind of see if that card's worth anything, if it's... Uh, playable or not but um let's take a look at the rest of the decks very similar to the to yesterday's video um the cards i kind of put back the cards i think were um over performers uh cards such as queen victoria and prince albert this card really surprised me with uh how powerful it, it was targets four opponents random cards in hand and it uh, increases the cost by one energy for three turns. So that three turns is what I'm after. Uh, similar with Sand Cat, it targets for the entire round. So that is nice, not just a single turn, such as Ragnarok. Um, Violet, again, targeting for three turns. The plus two energy on two opponents' random cards in hand. Uh, Yule Cat uh, it is for the entire round as well, plus one energy. And Center Claws, uh, it is going to be until played, so uh, it's not going to go away. So they're going to, if their cards uh, with 50 or more base power, uh, they are going to get dinged. And sometimes it gives us a little discount on our cards as well, which is nice. Uh, I'm going to play this in casuals, so of course I have Ghost in my deck. It's uh, almost an auto-include for me. And let's see here, uh, same deal with Hourglass. Uh, lately, it's just almost been an auto include in almost all my deck brews, just because that plus eight energy can really help us cycle through some of these expensive cards that I don't like. 
I don't like to linger around in my decks for too long. Uh, so I've subbed out uh, Art Art Deco was in the uh, Death and Taxes build. Uh, instead, I've included MLK as an energy gain permanently. Uh, a little bit cheaper than Art Deco, which is why I've subbed Art Deco, because this build does have uh, a lot more expensive cards with these sevens. Uh, you see these trees, these five-cost trees. Um, so if I would take a look at that Death and Taxes one real quick. As you can see, very similar. I think I've taken out, I took out Rabbit's Foot, Rat King, Art Deco, Crocodile. Um, Crocodile, kind of a little underwhelming for me in this deck, I feel like. Um, you always, it seems like you always want to play it on turn one, but sometimes you draw it and it's just, it's just bad timing. So it kind of feels awkward, like try, trying to hold it, but I don't want to hold it. You know what I mean? So it's. Um, I figured let's, let's try to take him out, even though it is a strong ability when it, when it happens the way you want it to, um, it doesn't always happen how you want it to. So that's kind of a bummer. So I'm going to try it without it, but that's the, the main changes. As you guys can see, it's very similar, uh, to the deck I showed yesterday, but again, I wanted to do a somewhat different take on it because, um, that first build I did go undefeated. And I still am undefeated with it. And it, it seems like it's got uh, uh, some... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's got some... Uh, wow, I just completely blanked. Um, definitely got some promise. It's uh, kind of overperformed what I, my expectations were. Um, I know that that Death and Taxes build specifically. I Honestly, I didn't think it was going to be very good the other day. And it uh, pleasantly surprised me, so... I'm kind of going on that same theme. I wanted to do the tree build this time. Uh, and we, like I said, we are going to showcase... This card is my primary showcase for the video. So it'll probably be the thumbnail. Um, but all right, let's, uh, let's check her out see what you guys think. Hopefully we can uh, get some wins with it. I've only played uh, like two games with it specifically. Um, but again, this deck too has been undefeated. So let's see if we can change that. Maybe I get a loss with this one. We shall see. Man, I hope I clicked the right deck. I didn't even see. Uh, hopefully it's not the other Death and Taxes deck. I guess we'll see when we start seeing trees or not. Okay, it is the right one. I see the crooked tree right there, right out the gate. Alright, so we're already hitting our opponents quite a lot there with the triggers. It looks like a lot of history cards too, which is going to be really good for our Manticore if we can draw it. So I'm going to go ahead and cycle this cat even though we're not getting anything out of it. Get that Crooked Forest online here. Oh, looks like he's actually going to make his cards more expensive himself here with that formation so that's not going to be good for him I'll be surprised if he's even able to play most of those cards now okay we're up to 15 energy on the back of hourglass so let's go ahead and start cycling cards here I want to get all these back in the deck that dragon's blood tree is going to start burning those cards that are too expensive now for him to play so i thought that would be kind of a neat mechanic to kind of toss that card in as these cards <laughs> are just burning away that he can now no longer play so uh let's see how that goes for us uh i'm thinking we're gonna get pando down so we start buffing all our other cards let's do it like this looks like we're gonna take round one like we might be up against uh, some type of uh, Roman Empire build. Still haven't really tried that much um, as far as an archetype goes. Maybe one day, once I can start gathering some Roman Empire cards, we can uh, showcase that. Ooh, that Manticore hit very good because all his cards seem to be history. 
at plus two for three turns is going to be quite painful for him, if I had to guess. Ooh, should I do it like that? Because I like that angel oak buff. Uh, yeah, we'll do it like that. Why not? Let's see what we see what happens here. General Sherman smacking him around a little bit. It's good. Good turn one for us. There's our door to hell. How do we want to do that? I want to get the mana core back in for sure. Just because of how strong it is against him. Comes the King Midas. Hit several cards in his hand. As well as Violet. So that works out nicely. I think we're going to play Midas. Since we're in the lead here, I think I'm going to throw Prince Albert back. Get it cycling again. You always have to think about cycling cards. Cards that you're going to want to get back later. Which are more important. If you get an opportunity like that to cycle a card and you think you're in the lead or, or up up and it's not going to be too impactful on that turn to get rid of that card might be a good opportunity to do it so like right now angel oak it's do we even care that much about this card now i probably not i mean it was included in the deck primarily for the crooked tree so i don't mind just letting it sit there right now to be honest it's kind of a uh, at this point, a dead card, unless I can get some more trees in my hand that will benefit from this buff it has. And then that, but the other problem on that same note is, do I have enough energy for that to matter? Because like right now, now I have the trees, but <laughs> look how expensive everything is. All right, looks like our opponent's putting up a little bit of a fight now. Crooked tree doing work there. Center claws too, so it's good for us. So this could be the last turn, so we're going to want to make it count, right? Oh, it sucks. I can't play both those like I thought. Uh, so we're probably not going to win this round. So let me... Let me see here. Let me... Uh, I'm going to just toss that out of my hand. Yeah. Let's just do it like that and get it out of here. I didn't see a way to win that, so... That's okay. We are up two wins to one here. Heading into round four. We should see our door to hell here soon. So I'm not too concerned with this game being a win for us. All right, how do we want to do this? I'm thinking... I'm thinking like this. Get that dragon's blood burning his cards up that are going to be too expensive to play. See if that helps us out here. Try to take advantage of the fact he only played two cards. Targets more cards in his hand. Oh. Hmm. I think I want to get Pando back going. See if I can get another trigger out of it. Oh, big turn for him. That's unfortunate for us. Dang it. 
definitely not what we wanted to see there. So this deck seems to have a little more trouble with the uh, energy. These cards are definitely more expensive than my other brew, which uh, seems to be a little more seamless in my opinion, as far as the how it plays. I think we go ahead and maybe we just throw this round, um, just so I can get this plus two energy here. I want to make sure uh, this final round, I'm not struggling to play these cards as much. It's going to go into, we're going to go into this round with 18, so I think that'll be, give us a good chance here. It's a good draw, too, for us. Hoping for some good draws here now when we need them. This is, uh, he's putting up a fight for sure. We need some more triggers. There they are. That's what we needed. I want to get his cards to where he cannot play them. That's going to help us out a lot. As we're sitting on 14 energy. I'm going to do it like this. All right. We're holding the lead here. Hoping we can get a couple more inflation, some taxes on them here. Into this final turn. There's one right there. So that should help us out quite a bit. All right. So how can we maximize the turn here? I'm thinking... Crooked with MLK and Sandcat might be our best. Is it going to do it, though? It looks like it does. So there you go, guys. Game one in the bag. Deck performed fairly well. I do like the trees, especially the Crooked, like I said, the, one, the card I'm showcasing. Um, seems really strong. All right, so let's go to the next one. We're going to do one more. Get that, get that tree tax going. Uh, round one, Oceans and Seas. Let's see what we got triggered in here. Prince Albert and Sandcat. We got that Dolphin online early, so maybe we just get some of these heavy hitters out now. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So I'm going to want them back later. I want Pando to start uh, spreading the love. All right, I think this is going to be an MLK turn. I want to get that energy if we can. So how can we do that? I think, so I want to give myself the best chance. So let's do Ragnarok with Multiverse. So there we go. We should get that energy from MLK. All right, it's so playing good so far here. All right, I think I'm just going to play the Crooked Forest on this turn. We have a big enough lead that I don't... Oh, shit, he's burning our cards now, though. Uh, yeah, let's do it like that. We have a big enough lead, and I just want to make his stuff more expensive going into the next turn. Jack-o'-lantern starting to burn our cards away now. 
That's annoying for us. All right, so we need to get some cards down quick. Uh, how can we do that? I'm gonna I'm gonna start off like this. It's like we tied that turn. <laughs> comes Manticore. He's going to be a heavy hitter for us. Hitting four cards. Alright, there's our door to hell that we're looking for. It's going to be a good one too. Play three cards. That's, that's the reason we include it. Get these big swings. We are just taxing him away. He's only able to play one card here. So he's struggling. These tax decks, man, they are just nasty. Really doing work. I want to do it like this. I'm going to get that ghost online in case we need it later. Get that extra energy. Start burning those cards up. He's got a whole handful of cards. The more we can do that, the better. Looks like he's in the lead. Only down by seven. Uh, we don't have a great hand, so we're gonna need a, a good draw here to stay in the get in the in the round. Let's see. Can Ragnarok and MLK win the round for us? Questionable. But we're gonna give it a go. Got lucky we didn't place in front of Vlad there. Well, all right, guys. So that's the deck. Uh, I'm kind of kind of glad to showcase uh, another inflation deck. I think it's definitely a very fun archetype. Uh, and if it looks interesting to you, I would definitely suggest at least trying it out if you have some of the cards. Um, even my, like, it wasn't too hard, I, I don't think, to trade for a lot of those cards either, so... If you've got cards for trade, uh, definitely try it out. Uh, but all right, guys. Thanks for watching.